Hello, everyone. From this class, we are going to start to talk about the um, um, phase transformation in solid. Specifically, we will first look at the diffusional uh, phase transformation, the phase transformation that involves diffusional phenomena in solids. And today's class is about a brief introduction to this section. Before we um, go into the detail for solid state transformation. Let's first talk about the phase transformation in general. There are different types depending on the different phases involved or the state of phases involved. For example, there will be solid gas phase transformation. These are the transformation that happen between solid phase and a gas phase. For example, we said sublimation, the change of solid directly into the um, gas phase without going through the liquid phase, or the oxidation of many metals. The, for example, the oxygen in the air attacks a pristine metal and form oxide. These are examples of solid gas um, phase transformation. Another type would be so-called solid liquid transformation. We earlier discussed um, solidification, the transformation from liquid phase to the solid phase. This is solidification. And the last one is about solid solid transformation. That is a transformation that we are going to focus on in later part uh, later in this section, um, the examples include the precipitation, the transform, the formation of precipitate due to the change in solubility. Typically, you may heard of precipitation for a liquid solution, for example, oversaturated sugar solution when it's get cold, cooled down, the oversaturated sugar. A crystal would precipitate out. But even in solid phase, the similar phenomena would happen, and this is so called precipitation type of phase transformation, which is very, very important for many metallurgical applications in alloys such as aluminum and titanium. And uh, there's also the polymorph transformation, for example, the transformation between. Uh, alpha ion and the gamma ion, between the BCC ion and the FCC ion. These are all different examples of solid. Solid phase transformation will, will be the focus for this part of the lecture. So when we focus on the solid state phase transformation, the phase transformation involving only solid, then in order for it to happen, we say at least one of the following two would change. One of the following um, two factors would change. The first one is structure. In particular, the crystal structure have, may change during a solid state phase transformation. For example, as we mentioned, the alpha ion to gamma ion phase transformation. If you remember, alpha ion is the BCC, our body-centered cubic ion, while the gamma ion is the FCC, our face-centered uh, cubic ion. And the, these, both of these are pure ion, which means in terms of elements, they consist of 100% ion, but the ion items are arranged in different fashion. For alpha ion, it's arranged like a BCC uh, crystal structure, while for gamma ion, it's arranged uh, as FCC, face the cubic structure. And around 910, this phase transformation happens. The low temperature phase would be alpha ion, while the high temperature phase would be gamma ion. Okay. Another example could be order disorder phase transformation. In this case, again, the material composition does not change uh, crystal, but it changes from ordered phase um, to disordered phase. Um, we'll talk more about it. This is more about uh, an alloy uh, or alloy. 
uh, which are between different metals. Quite often at the low temperature, we may have a phase that has atoms arranged in specific ordered fashion, while at higher temperature, they may form a disordered complete solid solution. Okay, we will talk about this in greater detail later. Another uh, factor that may change during solid state uh, phase transformation is about composition. Okay, to give an example, we talk about the spinodal decomposition, which we'll uh, explain in detail later. This is the case when the crystal structure does not change, but locally does change in composition. Okay, so when we say solid state phase transformation, either the crystal structure or the chemical composition would change, or both, but at least one of them has to change. Okay, and uh, another important um, consideration uh, about phase transformation for solid state uh, uh, process is the consideration on thermodynamics versus kinetics. And when we say thermodynamics, quite often we are considering the change in uh, Gibbs free energy or the lowering of system free energy. For example, here we plot the Gibbs free energy for initial state and a final state. And naturally, uh, if it's a spontaneous process, the initial state has higher energy uh, compared with the final state. Okay, and then for in terms of kinetics, uh, we are concerned with how fast the process happened from the initial state to its final state. Not only how fast, but also the root or pathways, which quite often we call magnetism. Pathway, that's what we call magnetism. And so what we illustrated here, from the initial state to the final state, there may be one pathway as what we illustrated uh, in this uh, blue route. And there may be a different route from the initial state to the final state. In addition, between initial state and final state, quite often there's a so-called energy barrier to go to the activated state that has an energy barrier. And to, in order for the system to go from initial state to activated state, the system has to spend some energy, which means it has to wait for a certain uh, probability for it to happen. And once it reaches the activated state, from there to the final state is typically a downhill process, which happens very, very fast. Okay? This is pathway, and in, in addition from initial state to the final state, it may end up not at the lowest uh, energy state, but may it may end up at uh, a so-called metastable state, a state with the energy that is somewhat higher than the lowest energy state, and it may follow a also a different pathway. These uh, considerations are what we mentioned by magnetism, while the speed or rate is what we mean by kinetics, how fast do they go, okay? And f for either case, they have to overcome the kinetic barrier. The barrier height may be different, which means uh, they may have different rate to go through different uh, reaction pathways, okay?